I never saw a film that wasn't in English till I was 17 and I came to London, went to London, because uh, I only saw British and American movies when I grew up in Manchester. And uh, suddenly I came to London in 1960, wham! I discovered world cinema. Very soon um, I came across Bicycle Thieves, which is, I mean, you know, I grew up in this urban environment. I didn't know that films that really were about the real world existed. I used to sit in the cinema thinking, wouldn't it be great if you had a film where the people were like real people? I didn't know that this was made when I was quite a little boy. It's a fantastic film that just... And yet, you know, it's not slice of life natural. No, it's not, not slice of life naturalism. It's a very heightened and poetic film. But boy, it doesn't have to get down to it. So, Bicycle Thieves. Great film. Um, of course, at the time, it, you know, at that point, it was about the Nouvelle Vague, the explosion of, you know, uh, Truffaut, Godard, and all the guys. And there's this extraordinary film, it, Vivre Savine. Now, this is a film about a prostitute in Paris. It's a very uh, idiosyncratic film. But they, the thing of getting out there and getting to the kind of the raw core of life, even though it's a very constructed film, uh, it's very, uh, it's a very remarkable film. And uh, of course, apart from anything else, um, we were all uh, at the time us lads <laughs> deeply in love with Anna Karina. Yes, she is. Good. So that's very important. Too. Important aspect of films. Um, I was a film. I was a film student, and I lived in this uh, these rooms just off Tottenham Court Road in London. And there was a lot of fuss going on because they were shooting this movie. It was called A Hard Day's Night, and uh, I watched them shooting it, you know. And I think there's even a shot of my flat in the film, basically. Very exciting. I was a film student at the time. And, you know, it's not, a, it's not one of the great films, but I've got a great soft spot for it. And what is great is that Richard Lester had really, he was inspired by what was happening across the channel in the continent. You know, it's a film about really getting out there and capturing things in a spontaneous way. And although it's not my kind of film, I've got a lot of respect for its energy, really, and its look. Great, great, great looking film. Now here is Ozu, the great Japanese director. Late spring, I just love this film. I love all his films. And in a way, um, he's a kind of inspiration and a sort of influence. I mean, he just, he really knows how to look at families and real life and place and relationships and character with a very ordered but compassionate uh, ability. And I, I love this film a lot. It's great. Um, now, I see over here, this is very remarkable. This is Judex by Fran Ju. Now, this is a completely different sort of film. I love the, these films. I mean, I, I, Foyard, too, is a great favourite of mine. Uh, these guys that made these films in the early part of the, you know, really around the time of the First World War. Uh, completely inventive, an extraordinary way of confronting the medium and really reinventing it. And this is weird as it is. And again, in inverted commas, not my kind of film, but still I think it's great and it's very entertaining, very jolly. Milos Forman, great filmmaker. Uh, there's the fireman's ball. That's great. And this is this is life, you know, life. People, you know, with all their faults and all, and Milos captures them. Uh, it's very funny. It's very real. Uh, it's, it's it's a natural energy. I, I love it. I love those early films, those Czech movies. Uh, uh, actually, I think he's all his films are great. But this is probably 
my favourite, the Fireman's Ball. I mean, it, and you really get what it sounds like. It's it's very good, very funny, uh, very political, and full of beans and energy. Fireman's Ball, Milos Ball, great. I had an operation, and I was laid up in bed for quite a stretch, for about two weeks. And every night, they showed a chapter, an episode of Berlin Alexanderplatz, which is phenomenal. Uh, I'm great. It's great that it's out here in a in a box, all all thirteen episodes. This is a filmmaking. I mean, Fassbinder. What an eccentric, what a genius, um, what a great filmmaker. Again, you know, capturing life, life out there on the street. Here it is, Berlin Alexanderplatz. I love it, it's great. So here's the film that got us all. This is the film that, I mean, I went to see this, Jules Jim, Truffaut. I went to see it with friend of mine and this girl we were both in love with <laughs> and of course the irony is that's what the films are all about um you know again you know uh, you just wanted you just we were all in love with Jean Moreau and uh it, it's a great uh, you know the thing that's exceptional about this film about Jules Jim is of course you know one always has said well the great thing about the Nouvelle Vague is that they made the films up you know people didn't adapt novels this is an adaptation of a novel but the film is far greater than the novella that it's based on. And it's just a great film about so many things, not least the passage of time and growing up. And uh, it's a great period film. And it's a very moving film, and it's got a wonderful score by Georges de Leroux. And right next to it on your shelf is a quite different film, Divorce Italian Style which is one of the funniest films there is, with Marcello Mastroianni, who we don't always see as a comedian, being hilarious. And I think this is a film, if you really want to laugh, this is a film to watch, Divorce Italian style. And that's as much as I have to say.